The difference between septoplasty and rhinoplasty is a major point of confusion when discussing surgeries of the nose. Some people say, oh, I had my septum done, and they really refer to changing the shape of their nose. Others use the word rhinoplasty. So really, what is the difference between septoplasty and rhinoplasty? Rhinoplasty refers to changing the shape and the appearance of the nose. As we went over in the other video that discussed the anatomy, our nasal shape depends on these two bones, these two upper lateral cartilages, and these two tip cartilages. But where the septum matters, and to review, the septum is this wall right between the nostrils. It comes up straight up over here. This part of the wall acts like a support structure here. So these two parts here are supporting these upper lateral cartilages. They also give strength to the tip as well. So when we talk about septoplasty, we're talking specifically about changing the shape of this. It's very rare that when you talk about a standard septoplasty that you're really talking about changing the shape. What is deviation? You hear deviated septum. Deviation means anything that goes off of what is expected. So what we expect our septum to do is come right down the middle over here, be a nice straight wall. What happens, and I'm gonna take these off in order to show it, is the septum doesn't always go down the middle. It starts to deviate, and sometimes it goes left, sometimes it goes right. Most of the time, these deviations happen inside the nose over here. So they'll create a bend, kind of like this. And something like this will, of course, bend in to the one side and obstruct or prevent air from moving because this part is bent or deviated. So when we talk about a septoplasty, we talk about correcting this deviation. It's rare, but it is possible for these deviations to also contribute to aesthetic issues. Uh, but most of the time, these aren't functional. However, if they are very extreme, of course, they can be. So when we talk about a crooked nose, that's when the deviation happens in these areas down here. And so the nose can be deviated or offline here or offline here. However, back to traditional septoplasty, and this is really important. When we're addressing these areas, we have to do a rhinoplasty because we have to change a lot of the shape of these support structures. But septoplasty specifically refers to surgery here, more when it's in the middle because this is where it's causing the obstruction. So to give a better idea of how do we do septoplasty, I'm gonna give you this magnified version of the septum. So this middle part over here, that purple part, here it is right over here. So imagine this is the support area right over here. The septum is made of two thin little pieces, mucosa. It's like that thin skin that you find inside your mouth or inside your nose. And the white piece is cartilage. They're kind of like a little sandwich. So when you have deviations here, it's not due to the skin, it's due to the cartilage. The cartilage gives it shape. So you'll have a deviation kind of like this, which is gonna give it a bend and obstruct. So what we do with these traditional septoplasties is we'll go in and the part that's deviated, we actually go ahead and we cut it out. So we're gonna use a real scalpel here just to demonstrate. And we do this with scalpel, scissors, there's a few different ways of doing it. Sometimes we, traditionally we completely cut it out. Uh, sometimes we're able to do a few things um, in order to prevent cutting it out, where we make little cuts and we straighten it out. But most of the time, your traditional septoplasty really just cuts out the center part. So we take this cartilage and that's it. It's gone. This is your septoplasty. We then bring this in and now the part that was bent is no longer bent because we have cut it out. And if you look inside, we just don't have septum there, but that's okay because we maintained our main support structure. Now, why does this really matter for rhinoplasty? Well, this cartilage that we took out is an incredible building material. And when we do rhinoplasty, and this is something we'll cover in a different video, but in order to do a good rhinoplasty and to change the shape of these areas, we don't just cut things off, we have to support them. So we need cartilage in order to do that right. It's very easy, not, or a lot easier, to take this cartilage right from here. Use your own cartilage and then resupport those. Now, if you've had a septoplasty before, 
we don't have this cartilage. So now we have to borrow or take this cartilage from other areas like the ears or the ribs or do cadaveric rib cartilage. And this is why it's important that if you're even considering doing a rhinoplasty, it's much better to do them together. If you have no interest in changing the shape of your nose now or ever, well then sure, you could just do a standard septoplasty where you go in and you take out this cartilage here and done. Now, we get a lot of patients that have had septoplasties because they don't know this information, and that's okay. It makes things a little bit more complicated because now we can't just go in here and take this cartilage. We have to go and get cartilage from other sources. But I really hope that this helps explain the difference between septoplasty and rhinoplasty. The septum is involved in the aesthetics of the nose, but it's rare that these deviations in these parts are really functional, it's possible, but most of the time when we say, oh, I have a deviated septum, it typically means here inside the nose.